open the gates. What did you say, Lori? I said, open the gates. Open the gates. <laughs> Here they come, all the gorgeous ladies. Um, this is going to be a fun one today, my friends. Uh, happy um, Saturday morning. If you are comfortable, we would love to see your faces. Please turn your cameras on. Um, we're going to have a really, really fantastic conversation today about boobies <laughs> and bras and finding the right bra. And look at all of you. This is so amazing. Um, before we start, if you guys would all please type in your name and where you are from where you're joining us from, that would be great in the chat. Um, I've got it open here so I can see where everyone's from. I am gonna start, I'll start it. Oh, there, Amber is in Slayton, Athens, Texas. Amber Slayton is in Athens, Texas. Susie, of course, is in Minneapolis. Uh, Allison is in Chelsea, New York. Allison, I'm coming to the city today. Um, Kim is from Rockville, Maryland. Lisa Weldon is in Atlanta, Marla Mitchell's in Toronto, Lori Moulton's in Oroville, Rita from Saratoga, Lee from Dunstable, Massachusetts, Angela from Grand Junction, Colorado, Lisa's in Calgary, and Raina's in Bedford Hills, New York. Um, I am in the Catskills right now. I will be in New York City shortly because we're going to be babysitting a grandchild for a week, and I'm very excited about it. Um, and my brilliant, uh, genius, badass partner, Nicole Hazy is in glorious Southern California, sunny Southern California today. Not today, not today, sadly, but that's okay. We can pretend. Oh, not sunny, but she's in Southern California, but it's not, there's Angie in her, okay. Conover, North Carolina, Teresa's in Kent, New York. All right. So I'm going to ask you a question before I introduce our special guest. Um, how many of you, of us have had an actual professional bra fitting. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much four of us, five. That's impressive, actually. Mm -hmm. Kathy's in Nova Scotia, Natalie's in Milwaukee. I'm surprised, but uh, wait, Allison says, since I started wearing bras in Chicago, right? If Dillard's counts, I don't know that Dillard's counts. No, nope, it's the old that. little, the old little ladies in the little shops in the little, you know, near the Jewish deli, the Jewish ladies would fit us for bras. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, a long time ago is what I'm hearing. I don't know that you could get a really professional bra fitting at Dillard's and certainly not at Victoria's Secret. They just don't do it the right way. And I did not know there was a right way until I went to bra tenders in New York City. Um, I started, I was getting really frustrated with the bra situation a couple of years ago. And I was typing, I just did a Google search and said, is there someone who like in Southern California in Los Angeles, there was a woman named Lily St. Cyr, who was a, I believe she was an, uh, a burlesque dancer, maybe even a stripper. She was. And she in the fifties, forties, fifties, I could be completely wrong about this, but <laughs> she um, of course needed lingerie and she needed it custom made. And then ultimately it became like a thing. And there was, that was where we would go in Southern California. If you needed lingerie or bra or the right kind of fitting, you'd go to Lily St. Cyr and they did a lot of custom work and, and stuff like that. But I had no idea what to do living in New York city and where to go. And, you know, boobs, boobs are complicated. Um, <laughs> and so I did a Google search and said, where can I go for a legitimate, professional, 100% real bra fitting? And bra tenders in New York City came up. And so that's where I went. And then I was talking to Nicole about this. Actually, one of our, um, one of our delightful community members typed in when we said, is there anything anybody wants us to cover? Said, could we talk about finding the right bra for my body? And so we reached out to Lori Kaplan, who is with us today, and she is known as the fairy bra mother. She is the owner and founder of Bra Tenders. Um, and since we reached out and had her as a guest on our podcast with Susie Shelton and myself, and myself. hi, Susie. Um, Susie has had a, a, a virtual fitting and I've had a virtual fitting and um, one of, you know, aside from being excited to drive to this New York City today to babysit the youngest grandchild for a week, 
um, my bras are there for me to try on. And I am so stoked. Um, I'm very intrigued by the pandemic bra too, which seems to be the most comfortable, squishiest, most supportive, perfect. Susie, Susie's giving it a whoop, whoop. She, I think, I think she may have tried that one on. Um, so we're going to talk about all things bras. If you have any questions, uh, please type them in the chat. Like I said, I'll be watching. I'll be watching the chat as will Nicole, if something should come up. Um, and if we really need to talk, we'll unmute you and you guys can can chat with Lori or chat with me or whatever. But um, I, I've i got to say, and before I turn it over 100% to Lori, I remember my mother, my mother had large breasts, has, I should say, still has large breasts. She had very, very large breasts. She had a reduction, I think, in her 50s. But she had very large breasts my whole life, and she's very tiny. She's barely five feet tall, and she has very narrow shoulders. And consequently, from wearing the wrong bras her entire life, she's now in her 80s walking around with two torn rotator cuffs. She's been wearing just the wrong pulling and neck issues. She has migraines. And it, I'm convinced that it is 85% the wrong bra for most of her life. She had her breasts reduced and lifted and then was able to get other bras, but there's still, she still has, I mean, when I see her, when I visit her and she changes, she has these massive indentations on her shoulders and it just looks so painful and she can barely raise her arms. And of course, she's not going to have surgery to fix that because at 85, why? Um, or 87. Ooh, she just turned 87. Gosh. Um, so anyway, that goes to show you how much of an effect wearing the wrong bra can have on you in the long run. It can cause neck problems, jaw problems, headaches, shoulder problems. And once that starts happening, your whole rest of your spine goes off. And as someone who's had three spinal surgeries, I can attest to how intense that can be. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to Lori, because not only is she a genius with the bra fitting and all things bra and laundry and everything you'd want to know, um, but she happens to be one of the most fantastic people I've ever had the chance to hang out with um, via Zoom. And I'm going to see her in person next week. So I'm super excited about that. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and no gentlemen here, I'm sure um, <laughs> if there are, welcome. Um, uh, say hello to our fairy bra mother, Lori Kaplan. Hi. <laughs> it's all yours, Lori. All right, so how should I begin? Do you want to hear about my business a little bit or just start with bra questions? I think we should start with what, how you got into this business. I think we need a little bona fides or bona fides, depending upon how you want to pronounce that. So everybody knows why you're such a genius at all of this. Well, it was something I discovered by accident, but I also, my grandmother to this day had the biggest breast that I've ever seen in my life, you know, and as a little kid seeing these massive mammaries and her sisters who are my great aunties also had big boobs. So they were always the entertainment at family affairs, you know, they'd buy men's six X t-shirts and they'd all squeeze into them. And they always made their boobs like the focal point of the entertainment for the evening. So they were just nuts. <laughs> and um, my family my, was very dysfunctional. My dad died when he was very young and I was very young and I dropped out of school and I needed to work and the only work available to somebody who was a college dropout with no skills was retail. And I fell into a job in this little schlock store by Rockefeller Center um, with this guy who sold seconds and irregulars and pantyhose and leotards to the ballerinas who came to shop at Capizio around the corner and discovered that I had a weird talent for being able to look at women and know what their bra size was. Um, I started out selling hosiery in that store and every week wardrobe supervisors from the Broadway shows and from Radio City, Rockettes, do you have any G-strings? Do you have any sheer to the waist hosiery? And this is, you know, the mid seventies. So G-strings really hadn't been invented yet. Rudy Gernreich invented the first thong like the second year that I was working for this guy. And um, I started having relationships with the wardrobe people who worked on Broadway that were always asking, you know, it's like, I need a push-up bra. And um, 
I developed relationships with them and, you know, just discovered that I had this weird talent. <laughs> and because I was a young, busty girl myself who didn't have a very good first bra fitting experience, um, I, I started to find lines for women that were like myself, that were young and already bigger than a double D or triple D, who didn't want a bra that looked like my grandmother's bra. And uh, some of the British companies were making bras in sizes that I never heard of because American department stores didn't carry a 28F or a 30G or a 36J. I didn't know sizes like this existed. And it changed my life when I did because my first bra in one of these, you know, corsatoriums in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, was a 36C Playtex bra, just like my mother wore, <laughs> except I was not that shape and not really that size. I would come to learn I was more like a 34F later on. So we were down the block from Saks Fifth Avenue department store, and they used to send their brides to us for undergarments and bras to go under the bridal dresses. And when girls would come in, I'm a 34B, and they were really 32D, all of a sudden, like we created this buzz. It's like, wow, this chick knows how to find bra sizes, you know, <laughs> that we don't know exist in the world. And, you know, the bra industry has come a long way from where it was. You could not buy a D cup and a 32 in the 1980s, probably not until early 1990s, because a D cup was for somebody who was full figured or plus size. And the band sizes started at 36. So if you were a 32D, you were just out of luck for getting something that was cute, especially. And in the 1980s, all, uh, there was a company called Lily of France. They invented the first Glossies bra. You know, it was the era of burn your bras when I grew up, Gloria Steinem, women burn your bras. And many years later, I would actually be astounded to have Gloria Steinem in my fitting room getting a bra fitting. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So uh, one day, the uh, dresser for Liza Minnelli came into the store where I was working and she asked for these Glossies bras because she bought Hanes Alive support hosiery and the Glossies bras and stitched them together to make body smoothing uh one pieces for Liza to wear under her costumes because there was nothing like that yet. So working with costume people and wardrobe people from Broadway, I started to learn a lot of tricks that also happened to work with brides. And that's how it all started. And I was with that guy for 20 years, you know, kept promising, oh, I'm going to make you a partner. I'm going to make you a partner. And he never did. So after 22 years, uh, I left and didn't know what I was going to do but I decided to start my own business and bra tenders was born. <laughs> and here we are now, 23 years later. Thank in the same space we moved into in, 20, in 2003. <laughs> thank goodness. Thank goodness. Well, the questions are starting already. Um, fortunately, Lori Moulton has a virtual fitting, but she says she has back issues and was told years ago that she's a 38C. And her question is, what type of bra would give the best support? By the end of my day, my back is killing me. Okay. Well, first I would say is learn what your size is. I don't know who told you you were 38C, but 99 out of 100 women who walk in here are wearing the wrong bra size. Uh, the mistake most women make is to buy the band size too big when what they really need is a bigger cup. So like the 34B woman, who walked out in a 32D, we have women that come in that think they're 36C that go out in 32F. We have women come at, in in 38 double D that are really a 34G, but you know they're just looking for something to accommodate the volume of the breasts and they're, nobody knows how a bra should fit. So sport bras give a lot of support. There are minimizers. There are a million bras that support. And the reason that they don't support is that they're not the right size most of the time. Um, I was shocked to learn because I always thought that I was like a 34B. I thought I was a B cup. And, and I had um, not always, but since this iteration of my breasts, we've all talked about my, my breasts have a long and story history. They, they were non-existent. And then I had a child and then they 
were left decimated by a year of breastfeeding. And then I got divorced. So then I got implants and then I had to have those replaced. Long, long story, got them taken out. So it's kind of like new and lifted. This is 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I needed new bras, but I thought I was a B cup, which is what I'd asked the doctor to make me. He's like, you're a B, you're a full B, you're a perfect B. Lo and behold, I'm a 32 double D. (laughs) And when I first heard that, I was like, there's no way my boobs are that big. But the bras fit perfectly. And B cups, I spill out, honestly. It doesn't quite. No, they're tiny. Um, and double D is not giant all of a sudden. It's uh-huh. it, it 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 I had to reframe my whole thinking about it, especially with my mom, who just complained, you know, all my childhood about having to buy these gigantic ugly bras because she had such big boobs. And um, and then I, I it took me a while to kind of assimilate the fact that, yeah, I'm a double D. This is not bad, you know, and it's just kind of an average, I'm not huge, but Double D is me. So thank you for that. But it, it it takes a minute to get used to the the idea that it's not what you you're not the size you think you are. Uh, you know, there's because no there's no education. You know, it's my my niece, I have a niece who just turned 28. She developed breasts. My brother is a single dad. So when she was 11 years old, he said, "What do I do?" I said, "You bring her to me." but she was already a 34F at age 11. And we see girls that are 15, 16 years old, they're 34G, 38F. Um, I think partially it's due to the hormones that are in food, you know, growth hormones to make the animals fatter, then people eat those animals and it makes us fat too. But girls are horrified when they're, they're, they're little girls in their minds and they have these womanly body at, that they don't know what to do with. and. Uh, It's a little bit weird, but there's nobody to teach them how to go buy a bra, how a bra should fit, you know, and there are things to look for, but nobody even knows where to get started on the size. And then there's no universal sizing in the world, in the world. So uh, if you're an American size or a British size or an European size or a Polish size, you could be this, the bras will fit the same way, but they're four different sizes in four different countries and four different brands. And there's no uniformity even within one brand. Every style is going to fit a little bit differently. And then the brands have, you know, uh, this is for a petite full busted, and this is for uh, an average full busted, and then this is for full figure or plus size full busted. So there's a lot of guidelines and parameters. And what do you do if you're 15 years old and you got to go buy your first bra? Who do you go to for help? Your mother doesn't know. We get brides coming in here, getting married that are buying undergarments for their wedding dresses. They say, oh, I have to bring my mother in here. She's never had a bra that fit her the right way. So it's just, you know, and it's just generational thing. Everybody's wandering around going, what do I do? And they don't know how a bra should fit. Um, Amber Slayton didn't have a question, but she does say she has major neck issues recently, bulging discs, straightening neck, thinking it has to be some effect from a 46 triple D and of course from stress. Mm -hmm. So if you're wearing the wrong bra, bra, 100%, right, that could definitely contribute to neck issues. Yeah. And, you know, an average D cup, D cups weigh about four pounds. So by the time, you know, you're going through the alphabet, every cup size, we start counting at B because uh, every cup size is one inch projection away from your chest wall. So by the time you're up to a K cup, and we, we size based on British sizes and they do double consonants so that they'll do double D, E, F, double F, G, double G, H, double H, J, double J, K, and now double K, which in American sizes would translate into ha- all the way <laughs> up the alphabet. And um, it's a lot of weight to carry around. And that just, you know, and gravity is the strongest force in the universe. So you get the weight of big breasts and gravity always pulling at them. And, that, you know, and back when I grew up, if you had big breasts, you were the target of unwanted attention. So a lot of us used to, you know, walk around round shouldered and cover up and slouchy and uh, mm. it's not good for the body. We just don't ever stand up straight because we're embarrassed or self-conscious, whatever it is. And it contributes to back, neck, shoulder, 
problems. I had breast reduction almost 30 years ago. And that was a big deal, you know, 30 years ago. I had uh, very bad scars, but I would do it all over again. They removed almost nine pounds of tissue from my chest. Um, here's a, a nice question. What are the signs that my bra doesn't fit properly? Okay, uh, two questions. Where doesn't it fit properly? Is it in the band size or is it in the cup size or is a, it a combination of both? So here's a couple of things that you can do to kind of get started. Take a tape measure and measure or just under your bust at the very, very top of your rib cage. That will give you the starting point for what your band size should be. So a lot of women that think or wear 36 or 38, once they do that tape measure, they're 31, 32, 33. So if you're a 31.5, you would, you would round up to a 32. Uh, band sizes always come in even numbers. So they're thir we go from 28 to 46 in even numbers. And then you can measure across the fullest part of your bust and subtract the band measurement from the fullest measurement. And however many, whatever that number is, let's say it's four or five, that would, we count from B, so it would be B, C, D, double D, E, if it's five inches. And then, you know, it just keeps going. But uh, that's, that's a way to start. The bridge of your bra, which is the centerpiece where the two cups connect, that should always lay flat against your breastbone. If it's not doing that, it means the cups are way too small. The wire part, if you wear wired bras, should come right in line with the crease of your armpit because your breasts start back here. You know, they don't start on the front of your body. They start back here under your arms. And the band should be snug. When you buy a new bra, you should always adjust it on the very first set of hooks and be able to slip two fingers underneath it. So 90% of the support from your bra comes from the band being snug. If you get it too big, it's, it rides around. It doesn't anchor the cups of the bra. And if you get it too big, then it's sitting up here between your shoulder blades and not really lifting anything in the front, everything is drooping. And you have to adjust the straps to a comfortable tension. You know, they should be taut enough just to, uh, so you feel supported, but not so tight that they're creating grooves or digging in or giving you a uh, pain in your neck. Love it. Quest, here's a question from Lee. Does a bra exist that's both supportive and comfortable that can be worn day and night? I sleep in my bra. Um, technically, yes, there are some wire free bras that I know I have customers wear at night. I don't necessarily know that I would wear a bra with a wire for sleeping. Uh, but there are now a good variety of no wire bras that are supportive. I used to wear a bra to sleep. I wore a, a back then they didn't really have good sport bras with actual cups. It was kind of more like one of these uniboob just mashers. Um, but we have a good selection of bras that people use to sleep. And the pandemic bra is one of those, the one that pulls over the head. Um, I, there's no name attached. It's just a phone. It's the Samsung SNT 500. But when the girls have headed south with age, how do you properly measure then for the cup size as they, like where they come down? Or do you, me you hold them up and measure them? It's a good question. You can measure and them while you're wearing a bra. Or you could uh, stand up or sit down and bend over from your waist so that they are pointing right at the floor and then just measure it that way, which will probably give you a pretty accurate measurement too. That is genius. Who would have thought? See, these are the things that we don't know that doesn't even, these are the things that wouldn't occur to me to do that. So I, I just, it's just these little things that make such a huge difference. Yep. And yes, I hear you. Lori Moulton said, underwires poke into my underarms. It's like they're trying to stab me. Sometimes it really does feel like that. Sometimes if uh, bras with very large cup sizes, the wires have to come up very high uh, to contain all the breast tissue. But there are bras that are cut a little, and there's different shaped wires. You know, there's wires that are more like you this way, and then there's ones that are a little wider. 
And that's why there exists tens of thousands of different styles of bras. It's it's like, you know, Goldilocks. You got to find the one that's comfortable, looks good. You feel good wearing it. And it's got all the pluses. And it takes a fair amount of uh, experimentation. You know, an average fitting in our shop, it, a person will try on about 22 bras to find three that she wants to take away with her. It's a lot. Um, uh, Rita says, I've heard different opinions about this. Is there a downside to wearing a bra to sleep? Not that I've heard of. You know, it's a, wearing a bra is a very personal experience. If you're comfortable, then that's all that matters. I, I have not heard of any medical issues with wearing a bra to sleep. I, I haven't heard of anybody injuring themselves wearing a bra to sleep. So, no. And I do know women who have worn bras to sleep that uh, don't sag as much as women who don't wear a bra at all. <laughs> Interesting. What's the proper way to put a bra on and what adjust, uh, adjustments can you make to make sure it fits properly? Okay, well, if your shoulders work well enough to clip your bra in the back, you can put the straps on and then just reach around and clip it. Uh, if you're like me and your shoulders don't work, you can close it in the front and then spin it around. And then you want to pull the cups up first, then slip your arms into the straps. You want to make sure that the breasts are sitting inside the cups, that there's nothing hanging underneath the cups. Uh, and there should, and again, the uh, bridge should be sitting flat against the breastbone. You want to do a little thing that we call swoop and scoop. So you want to take uh, your opposite hand and reach into, say, your right hand into your left cup and take all the breast tissue away from the side of your body and bring it up and to the center. And then repeat the other way. If you used to see your mother or grandmother put on a bra, they would bend over at the waist to put their bra on. And that's actually a pretty, still a pretty good method. You know, anything that helps you beat gravity is a good thing. And you just let them gently fall into the cups and then you would adjust the straps. So I usually recommend, you know, you just want to pick up the slack on the straps. You don't want to make them very uh, tight. I would recommend, you know, starting tightening them about that much and then a little bit more until it's just perfect but you can't I just had a woman in here so oh, I just throw my bras on and I'm good to go but if you don't adjust yourself then sometimes the cups can pucker it just you know it's just like that extra step to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be and bras have a lifespan don't they you really should replace your bras how often well, a uh, bra is built to last six months to a year, and it is totally dependent on your wear and care. So if you only have one bra in your rotation, it is not going to live a very long life, especially if you're very heavy busted. Uh, you can wear a bra two or three times before you wash it, but the more that you can rotate, so if you wear a bra twice and then you have another one, you can bathe it and let it rest a little bit. And the more that you can rotate, the longer the life of each one. So uh, otherwise, you know, six months to a year at the outset is, is when the elastic starts to break down. It's, you know, body chemicals, your, your own chemicals, whatever you put on your skin all contribute to breaking down uh, elastic. And if you wash them in the machine, then that's, you can do that. If you put them in a bag on a gentle cycle, but never the dryer. The dryer is the murderer of underwear. <laughs> um, and we should not use regular detergent, or should we? Well, there are a bunch of spe uh, specifically formulated soaps meant for lingerie. So they have polymers to keep the elastics and all the fibers supple so that they stay stretchy longer. You know, when you if you're when once the elastic is gone or stretched out, then it's not doing its job anymore, and it's time to replace it. But there are soaps that are specially formulated for lingerie or anything that you would use to wash baby clothes with. Nothing harsh. That's great to know. Do nice sports bras exist for large-breasted women? Amber wants to know. Yep. 
we carry about 12 to 15 styles of sport bras. And when you have big breasts, like if you're a double D or bigger, you need a different kind of bra than somebody who is in <coughs> uh, That We have a great selection of wired and wireless sport bras. And when you're uh, full busted, you wanna look for bras that encapsulate each breast independently, not just give you that uniboob mashed in the center of your body. And if you do multiple kinds of activities, like if you do yoga, if you do Pilates, if you do rebounding, trampoline, anything that's very active, uh, full body contact, you need a different level uh, of support for each sport bra. So if you're going horseback riding after you're going to your yoga class, you're going to need to switch bras because anything that has a lot of bouncing around is going to require something that really straps you in to avoid hurting yourself. Smart. I, these are all things that I would never have thought of. Having been in the industry for as long as you have, what are the trends that you're seeing that you wish you could change? Um. I would say that the industry is trending in the right direction. Finally, you know, after me screaming for 30 years, we need bras in multiple skin tones, that having black and beige is just not enough. Most of the manufacturers now are starting to get on board and making core products in multiple skin tones. So I'm really happy about that, that the styles for full busted and full figured women are getting more attractive. You know, there's a lot of research and a lot of engineering that goes into making a bra. A bra has over 37 different components to put it together. And especially when you're designing for big busts, there's a lot of uh, research and design elements that go into creating the structure that's going to support your body. So everything that I see is trending in the right direction. They're starting to make a bigger assortment of styles without wires because once the pandemic started, women decided, I don't have to wear a bra anymore. And that's it for six months, everybody sat at home and nobody put on a bra. And then you have to go out in the street for something and oh my God, <laughs> I haven't worn a bra in months. And then you don't want to wear something that feels as restrictive as your everyday work bra. And there are times you don't need to wear a bra. If, you don't, if you're going someplace, you're gonna go sit in a dark movie theater or something, you don't need to wear your best bra. You can wear something that's got a little softer support, a little more casual look. So there's a bigger variety um, of bras available for all sizes now. We, do, we have a petite uh, company that we buy from that the bras are like this big for 28 AA. <laughs> So, you know, the world of bras is a bell curve and you get the very petite sizes at one end of the curve and you get the very big sizes at the other end of the curve and everybody in the middle for us, core sizes are from 30 to 38 uh, D to H. Um, is wool light okay? Is the question Lori wants to know. Wool light for washing. Wool light? Nope, wool light is not good. There's something in Woolite that eats the fibers. And I, I was not aware of that until I started working with people who uh, do laundry on Broadway. They spend much of their life doing laundry and they uh, say that there's something in Woolite that breaks down the elastic in many things. So it, it eats the thing and that, you know, they could be in cahoots with the bra manufacturers. They want you to replace them more often. So we carry something in our shop called Soak that is formulated just for lingerie and also something called Forever New. They're gentle. Uh, soak has is a non-rinse option. So it's good if you're going away and you want to wash your bras you know, while you're on vacation. You can just soak them and hang them up. You don't even have to rinse them. And uh, yeah, they, they extend the life of your bra. And really washing them the right way will help them live longer. Uh, how do you know if a bra fits properly? I mean, are there signs to look out for, like puckering or pulling or? Yeah, well, um, either it's going to be too big or too small in the band or the cup or both. <laughs> uh, a, your breast should be inside each cup and they should not touch in the center here. 
no kissing here. They, uh, if a bra is cutting your boobs into four so that you have quadra boobs, the cup is too small or the style is not the right style for you. If you're not filling out the cup, it means uh, the bra is too big. A lot of mature women like myself, as we get older, we start to lose volume from the top of our breasts. So we become bottom heavy. So certain types of bras may not work as well. Like molded bras don't work well on a lot of older women where the breast tissue is already starting to lose its elasticity and suppleness. We don't fill out the tops of the cups. So a three section cup usually works better. It just helps contain a little bit better. It's a little different shape than a molded cup. And really it's, it's all trial and error. If you have marks, if it's too tight, if it's too loose, anything bulging, spilling, gapping, pinching, buckling, all of that means your bra does not fit or it is the, not the right bra for you. Um, Kim would like to know how a virtual fitting works. Okay. Since it's not actually a fitting, it's a consultation. And it would uh, start with, would meet on Zoom just like that. I would ask you to give me the two bra measurements. I'd ask you to come and wear your best fitting bra. Uh, you know, and my thing is I just can look at somebody and know what size they're in. And having the measurements helps, but you know, I'm doing this for 45 years. So, uh, and my fitters here, they all know they can look. Um, we would talk about what you're looking for. We tell women that every woman should have at least five different kinds of bras in the wardrobe, basic five piece bra kit. You should have the bra that you wear every day. That's your favorite bra that you feel comfortable in that makes you feel like and look beautiful. You should have that in beige and black, you know, two of each if, you could, if that's in your budget. You should have a sport bra, a strapless bra, something that's uh, fun and flirty or little black and sexy, and then a leisure bra for the weekends for the time you don't, you don't want something that's so structured and supportive. Um, is there a place we can donate old bras? There are a couple of organizations. There is one called the Bra Recyclers. Uh, I don't work with them. I don't know uh, where they're located or how they work. And there's another organization called Free the Girls that um, they collect bras and they send them to girls in developing countries to either resell them or to repurpose them. So they'll take apart, you know, can we use the slides? Can we use the hooks? Can we use the fabrics? And they'll make other things. And they found that girls who are selling bras for a living in these countries earn 10 to 15 percent more money than women who are selling other things. So there's a growing need around the globe for bras. That's great. Yeah, I I I, I love I love um, that idea. And also Soma, uh, which is a lingerie chain, donates bras to women's shelters. Um, Melissa S says, yeah. And I, I I would be curious to know if that's all bras or just Soma bras. I would imagine it's all, all, all. I can read your lips. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anybody have any other questions? Lori, I actually do. It's Nicole. Hi. Uh, you blew my mind. Six months to like six months to a year. You need to be replacing your bras. I don't know how many in our audience. I don't know how, how many of you in your bra drawer, how old your bra is, but I... <laughs> I know what I'm doing this weekend. I am, I am replacing. Um, you you did mention um, the the five bra the, the bra kit. I think for me the strapless bra has always been my nemesis. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been it's just either it it falls or it's too tight. So any recommendations regarding uh, just strapless fittings or things that you need to look out for? Um, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there that says you should buy a strapless bra and a band size that's smaller than your regular size. That is not true. A strapless bra should fit you in your regular size. And all the same things are true. It, you know, you want a really good fit in a strapless because you don't want to, you know, 
I go to weddings and bat mitzvahs and sweet 16s and all the girls are doing this all night long. That's me. That's me. It out. doesn't fit right, you know, and they're tricky because a lot of those styles, they just hit in a part of the body where, you know, we're kind of meaty here and it's right where the arm, the what people call armpit fat or side boobs, you know, it's getting the right shape of bra also. So, we, you know, and having a virtual consultation, once I know your size, we can hopefully solve your problem. <laughs> um, Melissa S., I missed your question earlier. Can we unmute Melissa S., Nicole? Or can Nicole, can Melissa S. Unmute, can unmute herself? herself? Self-unmuting. Hi there. Uh, you asked earlier about strapless underwire bras to wear underneath a dress for your daughter's wedding. Talk, talk to Lori, right? You got her. So you're happy awesome. at it. I, I'm actually, I just signed, I, I just sent an email because I would like to do a virtual. Um, my daughter's getting married next March in Mexico. I'm having my dress made in New York. So I will be in New York in the fall. And then again in January. Mm -hmm. So my question is who makes the, finding a strapless bra to support you and hold you up is so hard. I can't yeah. find one. We have 15 different styles of strapless bras. Uh, most and a lot of those are for D, double D, E, F, and G cups. We carry about eight or nine styles of bustiers, which are a longer garment. Sure, sure, sure. I'm in the theater, so I get it. I know. Yeah. So come I'm and make an appointment and see us. It's I where shall. Brides come, and you know, we've supplied the corsets for Phantom of the Opera almost their awesome. entire run <laughs> for all those. I'm things. I'm loving this entire conversation. It's so special and so great, and we thank you. Thank you. I will. I do want to pivot for a second and talk about corsets because I've worn a number of corsets on stage in my career too, and on film, obviously. Hello. Um, <laughs> but um, corsets have changed. You know, for a long time, they seem like some sort of torture device, just like girdles have changed. Girls, I don't think, I mean, you can get a girl, but they don't even call it a girl really anymore. We sell right? girls. <laughs> You sell a girdle. My grandmother, my grandma's mom, girdle. <laughs> my grandma and my mom wore girls. Um, now we just, you know, everything just kind of falls under the heading of it's just all spanks. Um, but if support, you're in a 1950s play on Broadway, you're wearing a girdle. You're not wearing spanks. A hundred percent. And um, and when you're doing some a period piece, you're in a corset that's probably a little more intense. But corsets today are a lot different. Um, what is the difference? This is a question coming from me. What's the difference between a corset and a waist trainer? And what the hell is a waist trainer and why? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who would do that? I guess a waist trainer is based on corset. You know, there is a whole, uh, there is a segment of the population that's into waist training. So they wear the waist nippers or waspies and there are special garments that you can wear to train your body it, it it reshapes your body it compresses your inner organs I don't know why people like that but you know there are people that have waists that are that big from wearing these things 24 hours a day I don't I can't imagine how it would be comfortable or healthy um, but what a waist a waist cincher or a waist nipper does is just bring you know give you a little bit more shape create that curve that, you know, that 36, 24, 36 stereotype that a woman's perfect body was supposed to be curvy like that. A waist center just goes from uh, the top of your rib cage down to your hips and pulls in your entire midsection to create a curvier, a curvier shape and a flatter stomach. That seems so very they, some of them are in the old fashioned corset type, they are boned and they lace up the back. But modern fabrics, you know, they come in rubber, they come in latex, uh, those, that's more fetish thing. The Kardashians started a thing where if you wear a waist trainer while you're working out, it's going to help you lose weight. It doesn't because what that does is make you feel like your stomach muscles are supported when they're not. So you're not using your stomach muscles or your core muscles. The garment is what's keeping you together. So it kind of defeats the purpose of getting those muscles to work. But, you know, we sell a lot of waist shapers, a lot of waist uh, cinchers and 
tamers and tuckers. We work with a lot of drag queens, you know, and, and men are built. They don't have a curvy waist. They're just straight up and down. So it gives them a little bit more cinched in look. Um, I, I will say this about wearing a corset and the corsets I've worn are custom made, so they fit my body. A um, lot of fantastic back support. I thought it would end up being a torture device, but if it's a custom made piece that really fits well, mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference if you have any kind of back issues. Just saying. It can. Uh, what, what some people still call corsets, especially for the bridal industry, what we sell here, we, they're called bustiers. So they don't have whale bones or steel bones. The boning is more flexible. Uh, it gives the garment structure. Um, yeah, bustiers. And a lot of them are designed for dresses that are very low in the back. So, you know, you can't get a regular bra that comes down to your waist. So you have a low back. The way that you do that is to design the front and sides of the bra so that the back cuts down to a V. And they can go from, you know, just under your shoulder blades or to the middle of your back. And in a rare case, all the way down to your waist. I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited about the pandemic bra. I don't care about it. <laughs> I just want something that gives me support. It's comfortable, a nice silhouette. And if I can get a nice silhouette out of it, I'm happy. I like it. I think you'll yeah. like it. I'm very excited and I will tell everyone about it. I'll 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 write something about it on Modern Prairie um once once I find the the bras that I'm looking for. Um shapes change over the course of our lifetime too. Our bodies change. We gain weight, we lose weight, breasts lose volume at the top. Um sometimes, you know, we have I don't know about you guys, but they're, they're not the same on me. My boobs are, they're, they're, they do two different things and they were, they were made to be perfect and they're still different from each other. So, um, we change bra sizes between six and eight times over our lifetime, you know, and as we get older, all kinds of things happen that we don't expect, you know, nobody told me when I was a little girl that I could expect to start losing my hair in my sixties that came out like out of the blue. <laughs> that I would be bald, you know, who, who thought that? But yeah, your body changes and be, but what your diet is, if you're taking medication, how active or inactive you are, any kind of health issues, what your posture is like, you know, all contributes to, to what's happening in your body internally as well as, you know, externally. So maybe sometimes um, if something's going on in our body that we can't quite identify, and in this general vicinity, back, spine, shoulders, maybe it's worth stopping for a second saying, well, let me take a look at my bras real quick. Just make sure that's not it before I go running to the neurosurgeon. Because mm -hmm. it could very well be that you're wearing the, that your bra doesn't work for you anymore. Yep. It's not doing any favors. I used to work with a chiropractor and he said, I'm going to send my patients to you. He said, everybody who's got a pain in the neck. I'm sure that pain would go away if they had a proper fitting bra especially if you're carrying a lot of weight here, you know, four pounds might not seem like a, a lot, but if it's sitting up here on the top of your body and, you know, gravity is dragging on it all day over time, it could have a really debilitating effect. It's a chicken. <laughs> it's like carrying a chicken around on your chest. <laughs> or, you know, I, I have customers with breasts that are, JJ or K or KK cups, you could use a bra to put an infant in to, you know, as a swing, the cups are oh so my good. goodness gracious. Well, and imagine, I mean, you know how great you, you feel if you're trying to lose weight and you lose four pounds, it's like a massive accomplishment and it takes forever. So you imagine what that, those four pounds are on your, on your chest every day, day in and day out. You've got to, got to not only be kind to the girls and let's, while we're at it, talk about you know, going for our regular mammograms and getting our exams and keeping up with all of that, very important to take care of the girls. But then you got to take care of everything that's around them, right? Yep. Yep. To, to support them. They could they can be as healthy as possible, but if they're making you feel like crap, then you got to fix that and get, get, get you a good bra, especially before running to a plastic surgeon too. There you Absolutely, go. Absolutely, because a properly fitted bra can make you look 10 pounds young, 10 pounds thinner 
and 10 years younger in a minute, you know, and I just had a woman, she said, it looks like I had a boob job, but there's no pain, there's no mess, there's no expense, there's no recovery. Having a well-fitted bra is the most cost-effective, immediate way to improve your appearance. And it does make you feel better. You feel, it, it, there's nothing, it's a great feeling to walk into a room feeling confident and comfortable. Yep. Um, it can change how your clothes fit. It can make you, like Allison just said, it can make you feel like a million bucks when you walk into a room and you know you feel good about the way you look. You know that, we all have that feeling um, at some point in our lives where you go, yeah, this is not bad today. So why not have that every day with a great bra where you're like, okay, boobs are okay. You know, now we got to figure out what to do with the butt, but the boobs are good. <laughs> I'm starting my life now. <laughs> I just wear kimonos, takes care of all of that. Um, After bras, right. our second biggest category is shapewear. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I can totally understand that. Especially um, in formal clothes. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it, 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 those, those do make a huge difference. I, I know when I'm, when I'm styled, when I have like important things to do and I, I put on a shapewear and get smoothed out, it does feel a little bit better. I'm not the most comfortable things in the world, but in a pinch I'll go there, but not my daily. Um, all right. We're, we're, we're coming up. We got about nine minutes left. Um, does anybody have any burning questions for Lori before we get ready to say farewell? Um, you can find them at, I think it's, what is the URL for bra tenders? It's bratenders.com. Bratenders.com. And there you can find a way to make a, a virtual appointment if you want to. Um, and all their information is there. And then another thing, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to say this, um, once you have your fitting and you get your bras and it's ready to, it's time to get new bras. Uh, and if I would suggest getting them from bra tenders, you can order them online. You can call, you can get them rather than getting them somewhere else. Cause then, you know, um, we, we gals got to support our women with businesses dug on it. Um, so instead of, instead of ordering that raw on Amazon, get it back from bra tenders and six months and a year later. Yeah. I just want to say something too, and sorry, I'm piping in, is thank you for this. And for those of you that have friends that don't like really care like about a bra or whatever, I have friends that like, they're not style people, but they'll come to me and I took her bra shopping and she felt like so good. She was like, oh my God. And now she keeps up with it. So if you have friends that are feeling like down about how they are, their appearance, or they just want to change something, or, you know, they have like their clothes are fine. It's just what's underneath like be a good friend. Like it, it's not really embarrassing. Like this person would never be the person to come to me. And she did. So it's amazing. So thank you for this. Thank you for spreading the gospel. <laughs> I'm a 34 double D. So like, you know, and my friends are not, they all wear the cute little clothes. Like I can't, I, or I need to get the right pieces. Yeah. underneath. So, but you know, I have yeah. good bras. Like I spend money on bras, but I'm coming to see you. Thank you. We work with a lot of stylists and we tell them before you take your clients shopping for a whole wardrobe, bring them for a bra fitting because the clothes are going to look totally different if they're wearing the right bra. And, you know, especially if you're full busted, you're trying on button downs, you don't always get the buttons to close. There are bras that help solve that problem. Well, and you can use the non-foam ones under a shirt, under a blouse, as opposed to what you would wear under a sweater, right? The smoother one, right? right? And that there are minimizer styles. There's a million styles of bras, you know, and they don't have to be uncomfortable. They can look good. They can be comfortable and they could be everything that you ever hoped a bra would be. It really does make a huge difference. I know. I, I'm so excited to get in my car and drive to the city and try on my new bras and, and, and and then have the second half of my my fitting this coming week, which is also my birthday week. So new bras on my birthday week. You gotta treat yourself some somehow. Um, and it's just so basic, you know, it's foundational. It's it's it is. It's 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 should be something we do for ourselves on the regular and we should know more about and we just don't. Nobody tells us these things until now. Um, thank you all for the happy birthday wishes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but nobody discusses this with us. Like my mom put me in the bra she wore. I had a completely different body. I didn't have boobs. I wasn't a cup until I got pregnant the first time. 
I didn't, there was no reason in my twenties to even wear a bra, but she made me. I had a niece who was a 32A when she got married. And when she got pregnant with her first style, she, her breast blew up to an F cup. And her husband kept saying to me, is there any way to keep them that size? Is there any way to make sure they stay that size? But after nursing three babies, she settled at double D, but it's like her breasts were sucked dry. There was just nothing left. They were all like the inside of a baby bottle when the <laughs> formula is, the plastic just collapses. That's how her breasts looked. But with a good bra, you know, she was able to look good but she went from one extreme to totally the other in a matter of five years. Yeah, same, same. I went from from a, an A to, uh, I believe it was a, an E with the first one. And then the second one, it went even further. It's it's amazing what we do. And I wouldn't change it for anything in the world, but I would, I would love to have found a way to be comfortable in my own skin with the right bra than having ever had to have had any of the surgeries that I did. Those were just especially to end up where I am now without the implants and just my boobs are doing what my boobs are doing for the rest of my days. So it would have been nice to have avoided all that anesthesia and pain and fuss and expense and just bought myself some really nice, comfortable bras. So let that be a lesson to everybody. <laughs> Try the bra first. Uh, Virginia says, I've learned so much about bras and to settle uh, and what to settle for, and I'll be fitting bras that are so much more com. Uh, that I, what and to settle, I'll be. I've, I've been fitting bras that are so uncomfortable. Yeah, no, you can't. You shouldn't settle for uncomfortable. Not anymore. It's enough already. When Especially you settle for anything, we're worth it. You know, and a lot of women come in here and they say, hey, "I'm not going to buy a bra. I'm going to wait until I lose ten pounds." It's like wear a bra that fits you now. And 10 pounds, come back and see us and buy another bra that fits you then. But you're worth feeling good every day that you're awake and alive. <laughs> it's reminded me of me hanging on to my skinny jeans because I know someday I'm going to get back in them. And it's been a decade. And there's just no, <laughs> that's not happening. It's just not happening. I, I need don't to even want to wear pants that don't have an elastic waist anymore. <laughs> I'm really just, I'm wearing a big waistless linen jumpsuit right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Susie and I know it just, it, and I think a lot of us learned too, during the, the days of the pandemic, that comfort is really the most important thing. So let's carry that forward, but feel really comfortable about who we are in our own skin and, and do this for ourselves. I mean, it's very proactive to be able to do this for yourself. And, and, and like I said, it's foundational. So if you start saying, I'm going to take care of myself, I'm going to help myself to feel good about myself going forward in my life, in my job, in my, whatever I'm doing, wherever I go, it really does start with the foundation with the bra. So I'm so grateful. We had this conversation today. This was terrific. Lori, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And remember, guys, it's Bra Tenders in New York City, and it's bratenders.com. And you can set up your virtual, or if you're in the area, you can make an appointment and go in. Um, all the fitters are fantastic. Um, I didn't even see Lori when I first went in. We didn't meet till till a few weeks ago virtually. So um, they're they're all great. You can get anything you need there for any occasion too. If you need something for a special, like a, the wedding, strapless, whatever, backless, plunging, that's the place to go. So, um, I guess that's it. Um, thank you guys so much yet again for joining us in another one of our fabulous workshops. Nicole, um, puts these things together and she's just brilliant. She's just brilliant. I just, I'm, and I love this community so much. I want to uh, thank you all so much for your support of Modern Prairie. We have all kinds of fun things in the works and some really exciting announcements coming up. And um, uh, check the events page at Modern Prairie to see what's next. And I will see you all very, very soon. Be sure and listen to the podcast, The Nitty Gritty, um, with myself and Susie Schubert. And um, we're going to have some special guests on that, too. We've got a really fun year ahead. And also, 
Um, we're getting close to the first birthday of Modern Prairie. So while I have you all here, I know it's my birthday next week, but even more importantly, Modern Prairie is going to be a year old on the 15th of May. Is that right? May 15th, yeah. we're a year old. And Wild. we are here because of you guys. So thank you so much. And thank you for helping this community to grow and for being such wonderful supporters of not just us, but of each other. Um, nothing makes me happier than knowing that you're chatting with each other when we're not all together and supporting one another. Um, it really warms my heart. And congratulations to you, partner. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you, everyone. Lori, this was unbelievable. This has been, this has been recorded. So we'll upload it. I encourage you strongly to share it with your girlfriends, your friends. I mean, the girls need to be supported, not just girlfriends, the girls. So Lori, thank you so, so much. Melissa, as always. Love you guys. Lift up. Have a very uplifting perky day. <laughs> yes. Let's all be perky today. Perky, perky. Bye, we ladies. Have thank a, you. A better here named Crystal, she would say to everybody as they were leaving, nips up, girls. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm down. Nips up. See you Thanks, soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.